hello there. I'm currently not looking my best that I could possibly be. And you know what? I was actually about to retint my eyebrows, retint my lashes, and do all of like my stuff that I do that's high maintenance in order for me to be low maintenance. And then I thought, you know what? Why don't I just film it? Because I've not done one of these videos in a good few years. And I thought I would show you my kind of routine on how I make myself feel a bit more confident. If you are happy and confident exactly as you are, I am not saying that you need to change a single thing about yourself. But honestly, these are just a few things that I do that make me feel a little bit more confident. And I'm going to start with doing my hair because I've actually left it in, um, I mean, honestly, this is a good hair day for me in terms of uh, waking up and my hair looks like this. It really has its moments of being a hell of a lot worse. Let's get into it all. So first things first, I swear by dry shampoo. I don't actually know what I would do without it because I wash my hair maybe like every, mm, I used to try and just wash it once a week. Whereas now I feel like I wash it maybe every four or five days. And when people are like, how do you do that? Dry shampoo is my best friend. Normally I use the Batiste one. I've just run out of that. So I'm currently using up one that I had, which is the Living Proof one, which is an expensive dry shampoo. It's probably the best one that I've used. It's the Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. And it says it actually cleans hair and softens up. I don't know about that. But if anyone is particularly fussy with their dry shampoos, this one is really nice. I think it's like 22 pounds. And then I just brush out my hair. I mean, at the moment, the length of my hair fine. I just literally want to tidy up the front bits. And oh my God, I've just realized I forgot lip balm. That was going to be my first step. I think we can all agree that hydrated lips look a lot better than dry chapped lips. Am I supposed to do heat protectant every single time I straighten my hair? I'm assuming the answer is yes, but like how are people doing this? Because then your hair's just wet. I don't understand. I always use heat protectant before I blow dry my hair and like before I use my Dyson Air Wrap, but when I'm straightening it, I'm like, am I supposed to do it directly before I straighten? <gasps> I should have just blow dried it. Either way though, if I'm not feeling super confident, if I style my hair, it makes me feel 10 times better. So let's get down to business. This is one of those like hair wrap things. However, I did spill fake tan on this one and I put it through the wash and it's come out yellow. The next thing that I find makes such a big difference because I have quite fair hair naturally. Well, I mean, actually it's not that fair anymore. Like look how dark my natural hair color is underneath. But I find that tinting my brows and tinting my lashes makes such a big difference. Okay, so tinting eyebrows, I would say is easy level. Tinting eyebrows, my lashes, I would say, is intermediate only because it's a little bit hard to get it all on your lashes without getting it in your eyes. I mean, it's obviously really, really recommended that you do not get this stuff in your eyes, but there have been occasions where I've got this in my eyes and it burns like a bitch. And it's probably horrifically bad for your eyes. And obviously then I had to like go rinse my eyes with loads of contact lens solution. So all I want to say is I'm going to show you how I do it. This is not a professional way of doing it. Disclaimer, I am not a professional. If you choose to do this, it is on your own accord. <laughs> I'm going to do my lashes first because they need about 10 minutes to develop, whereas my eyebrows take me like two minutes to develop. The brow and lash tints that I'm currently using, um, I'm using the Miley eyebrow and lash tint in the, I think it's just the shade black, which comes in a little squeezy tube like this. I have to say though, I have I've also used the Julienne one, which is this brand. I also have their peroxide stuff as well. And I do also have the Miley peroxide. The Miley one I find doesn't quite last as long as the Julienne one. It still lasts me like maybe two to three weeks. And then for my eyebrows, I use Reflectosil in the number three. I think I just ordered this off of eBay or Amazon. This is the shade Natural Brown. I actually mix in a tiny dot of black just to make it a little bit more cool toned. And I do it in this little shot glass, which as you can see is well loved. That is way too much. So I just put in a bit like that and then mix in a few I don't know, it says to do, I don't even know how many it says to do. Follow the mixing instructions on the product. This little angled brush and the shot glass, I think came from the Miley kit anyway. But you just wanna mix it to a consistency where it's creamy, it's all very well mixed together, but you don't want it to be too runny. Kinda just trial and error, but definitely following the instructions. Do I have the instructions anymore? No, do I vaguely know what I'm doing? Yes, <laughs> again, not a professional. Actually, you know why I think the Miley one doesn't quite last as long? It's not as dark black as the Julienne one is. Warning, I'm about about to look crazy. I'd recommend taking some Vaseline and a little cotton bud and putting some on your skin just so it doesn't stain your skin. The aim here is actually you don't really want to get any on your skin because it is quite strong, but you also want to try and avoid getting the Vaseline on your lashes, otherwise the dye doesn't stick as well. God, this is all sounding so complicated. I promise it's so much easier when you <laughs> when you have the hang of it. I'm wearing a black hoodie for a reason because um, have I dropped this down myself in the past and stained multiple items of clothing? 
no comment. I know for a fact that any like beauticians are going to be probably screaming at the way that I'm doing this. This is probably not the most effective way of doing it, but it works for me. I just kind of blob it onto my lashes, but it's quite hard to get it to stick. I've tried using a spoolie to do this, but I find that just again, it, it wipes off half the product. So I do kind of lay it on really thick and give myself really clumpy looking eyelashes for a sec. I would definitely say though, if you're not feeling super confident that you would have the ability to tint your, your eyelashes maybe seek professional help no way <laughs> oh my no that made me sound that made it sound like you need therapy i mean like either ask a professional's advice or go to a professional if you're not feeling super confident in it because it is a little bit fiddly but you can do it from home and it does take me a good like five minutes to get it all on there it's so hard to get it to stick to the lower lashes like i do actually end up kind of getting it on my skin i really hope the vaseline is gonna save this <laughs> This looks wild. Another disclaimer, if you have blonde hair, don't get this in your hair because it will stain your hair. You know what, it would probably be beneficial for me to buy some of those sticky pads that you put under your eyes that you can like stick onto your face so that I don't end up looking like this, but I don't have any, so. There's still a tiny bit of the black in here and like the mixture, so what I'm gonna do is add my brown Reflectosil. I usually do about a centimeter and I just put it on the side and then mix it all in. And again, add some solution. It's kind of fun, I feel like, um, you know like when you're a kid, and you make potions out of a bunch of random stuff. That's kind of what this feels like. For my eyebrows, I actually make sure they're all sort of flattened down instead of sticking up. Otherwise, like there's no point dyeing your skin like directly above. So I brush them all down and then I usually start from the middle. Ooh, this does look a lot darker than normal. Guys, I think I've put too much black in, but oh well. Also, if I'm gonna be shaping my eyebrows, I always do it after I've tinted them just because the tint allows you to see where all the hairs are and then you can pluck accordingly if you make any mistakes just take a cotton bud and again this does stain your skin slightly so you want to make sure that you're being somewhat precise with it you don't need to be like super precise but i'd like as you can see my eyebrows not going to turn out like that i really hope anyway but try and follow the shape that you do if you're filling them in i'm thinking maybe i should wipe the front of this one okay that's better i'm not gonna lie my eyes are burning a little bit it's not particularly comfortable. Fumes are starting to get into my eyes now and it's very uncomfortable actually. You know what? I think the Vaseline has made the eye pain worse because I feel like it, the Vaseline is working itself into my eyes. Anyway, it's been about a minute now so I'm gonna wipe off the eyebrows. Can you see how it looked like it was gonna be really scary but it's actually not. I could have left that even for a bit longer. You know what? I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Luckily, I've still got some left in the pot, so I got scared and wiped it off too soon. I do like my eyebrows to be darker than they usually would be. I mean, obviously that's why I'm tinting them in the first place. Okay, so let's now, hang on, let's wipe off this eyebrow. That's more like it. By the way, I'm just using some micellar water to wipe this off. Sometimes I will literally just use hot water as well, or like warm water if I'm by the sink. I'm not gonna lie, it still looks very scary right now because I've still got these massive horror movie looking lashes on right now, but I think my timer is about to go off. That's how the brows look, I love it. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay, so now it's time to wipe this off. And again, I will say, I just want to um, say again, as if I haven't made this clear enough, do not get this in your eyes. Be super careful how you remove it. And as soon as you get any on your cotton bud, use a different part of it or just use a new one because trust me, it Wow, I'm really selling this, aren't I? Also, you don't want to saturate this too much. Otherwise it will probably make it all run into your eyes. We are nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. And then I'm just gonna cleanse my face just to make sure that any residue is off. So this is what my eyebrows and my lashes look like now. My lashes are definitely darker. I feel like they still could be darker though. And my eyebrows, they are definitely darker as you can see. They do look a little bit crazy at first because one, you're sort of not used to them. And two, they are definitely quite dark. However, after like, I don't know, the next day after you've washed your face, some of the tint comes off your skin and they look less intimidating, I promise. And then what I like to do, but I only do this like every, I don't know, two, three months, because my eyebrows grow so freaking slow, is I give them a little trim. Oh, this is gonna be so hard to do because my mirror, hang on, let me just get closer to my mirror here. So I brush them up with a little spoolie and then just give them a little snip. You don't wanna go too crazy, otherwise they will end up looking quite patchy. Oh, did I just cut off too much? Maybe. 
Oh God, I think I just cut that one too short. Oh my God, I did. I just cut that one too short. It's because I'm not like properly looking in the mirror. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing rather than seeing what I'm actually doing myself. But there you go, lashes and brows tinted. And there's something else that I do, which I know that a lot of women do and a lot of women do not do. I shave my face. However, when I say I shave my face, I think it was during lockdown. I maybe did it, did I do it in a video? I think maybe I did it in a video. I tried the whole like dermaplaning my entire face thing. And yes, it made my makeup go on very smooth. However, if you have got slightly more peach fuzz facial hair like I have quite thick hair I've always been quite a hairy person I've always had like long thick arm hairs and like you know I've got peach fuzz on my face but it's like a little bit thicker than your average peach fuzz I would say mine is blonde so you just can't see it but it definitely is there you can see it in a lot of my TikTok videos and stuff but, but because it is on like the thicker longer side generally I leave it alone because when I did shave it like a few times I think it was during lockdown it did feel stubbly it didn't look stubbly but it definitely felt stubbly but I know that there are people out there that they shave their face and it doesn't feel stubbly. For example, I shave my upper lip, like, I don't know, like once a month or like every three weeks or so. And I use one of these little like razor things. This one is from a brand called Intuition, I think. That's what it says on the side of it. It has little replaceable blades. I got this in a super drug goodie bag like last year. And I always shave my upper lip. I also have this brawn portable little facial hair trimmer that's got like a circle on it and it's like electric. I've not used it in a while, but I should get that back out again. Normally I just use this on like the edges of my eyebrows, a little bit in between my brows, but be careful because one time I shaved a chunk out of my eyebrow on my upper lip and like around my mouth. However, today it's been a while since I've done my whole face and I want to try it again because I kind of want to do this for my wedding just so my makeup looks as flawless as possible. So I'm going to do an experiment here. So I've seen people say that you should put on some oil to do this just so that it glides over quite easily. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really scared. I remember when I did this before, I like missed a patch somewhere on my forehead and then my makeup looked so weird on that patch because it was clinging to the little hairs. Cause like, you can't see them, but I have like the tiny, tiny, tiniest little hairs, even like on my forehead and stuff, which I think is normal. Oh my God, can you see that? Problem is like, where do you stop? Cause I could keep going down my whole bloody neck. Oh my God, and you can really see how blonde it is. Look at that. Again, I'm not a skincare expert, so I would really recommend watching a professional do this, which I have watched some tutorials. And they do say to do sort of like small, light little strokes. It also does help to kind of pull on your skin. So I would recommend doing that. However, I can't do that right now because I've got a mirror in one hand. Be super careful around your eyebrows cause you don't want to shave them off. Oh my god, I definitely just got a bit of my hair. And I'm just wiping like the excess off on my little piece of tissue paper. Yeah, weirdly I find on my upper lip, it doesn't grow back feeling stubbly. It just grows back feeling normal and like soft, I guess, because maybe my hairs are finer around here. I am sure I'm not doing this perfectly accurately, by the way. So if anybody has any tips, let me know down below. Oh my god, look. By the way guys, to my understanding, it is a myth that your hair grows back darker and thicker if you shave it. Really, it's gonna feel slightly thicker because you're like cutting off the fine tip and making it more of like a blunt edge. However, from my experience, like when my face felt stubbly before when I did this and I didn't like it, I then just let it grow out and then it went back to feeling exactly the same as it did beforehand. So if I don't like this today, I can just grow it back out again and then not do it again and it's fine. It's not gonna like permanently destroy my facial hair you know then for my eyebrows usually i kind of hold it like this and go sideways look at all that actually i think half of it fell in my lap to be fair just taking some micellar water and i'm just gonna wipe off and hopefully have a feel around my face and see if i've missed anything currently my face is feeling super smooth but this is also something that you can get done professionally i think they call it dermaplaning and it is something that i would maybe consider getting done professionally just before i get married just so that i don't make any mistakes and i like go to somebody that actually knows what they're doing although i can't lie i'd be a bit scared that they would mess up my eyebrow shape imagine if you got it done just before you got married and they're like shaved off your eyebrows and made them too thin or something i'd be devastated it sounds so ridiculous, but I'm just scared to trust professionals because I've had a few bad experiences and having a bad experience I feel like just makes you want to do everything yourself because you then if at least if you like fuck it up Then it's your own fault. Hence why I did my own hair during lockdown Something else that I love doing if I really want to treat myself and treat my skin And I feel like does make a difference in terms of how glowy my skin looks is using sheet masks I'm not actually gonna put this one on right now just because this video is getting quite long and I still have a fair few steps to get through But sheet masks I find are really good. I also have like a plug-in 
LED mask that I use sometimes, but I can't tell the results of that because I use so many other skincare products that I don't know what is doing the work, you know? I do like using my LED mask and I like to think that it's doing something, but I can't like fully recommend it because I can't tell because I'm not just solely using the LED mask, if you get what I mean. And that's probably quite an extra thing, but like your box standard sheet mask, I actually find do a really good job at like making your skin look glowy and keeping it more hydrated. And then something that I don't speak about super often on camera, but I have, I think, tested all of these things in multiple videos, but I still actually use these. These were all super cheap. This little face roller thing, they sell them everywhere, like these pink jade, or is it pink quartz? I have no idea what it is, but it's probably not even real anyway because this one is so cheap. But these stay really nice and cold without putting them in the fridge. If you put them in the fridge, even better. But I love how this one has got the two different sides. So this one I find really, oh no, is mine breaking? Oh no, I was gonna say like this one was cheap and cheerful from Revolution. It certainly is cheap and cheerful because it's just exploded in front of me. I don't even know where that's gone. That's just rolled into crevices unknown. Maybe you should invest in a more expensive one and maybe it wouldn't do that. I have had this for a few years though, to be honest. But what I was about to say is the small side is so good for like getting under your cheekbones and de-puffing your face. And I used to be so skeptical of things like this because I didn't really think that they made a difference. However, I really think they do. When I compare like doing one side of my face and it literally, all it does is like temporarily de-puffs. So again, like if I'm going out to a party or like sometimes when I'm filming or I just want to look my best and feel a little bit more confident. Before I do my makeup, while I'm doing my skincare, I will, let me show you. Spray my face with some mist. This one is the Bow Bio Hill Panthenol Seeker Barrier Cream Mist. And then I'll either use a hyaluronic acid or like my snail mucin stuff. This is just the L'Oreal Hyaluronic Acid. Just a little before and after of my face, so. This is before. And then with the rollers, you simply just sort of like roll upwards. I usually try and go like underneath my cheekbone, across like this and up. And then when I think you have like lymph nodes here and here, and then I tend to like take it down my neck, down the side here. So go like up and then down. Definitely helps if you don't have big bulky earrings in. And then same on my chin. It's a little bit harder to tell with these kind of things because this side of my face is slightly wider anyway, but I definitely feel like this helps. It makes me feel a bit better. It makes me feel a bit more confident, especially in the morning. I think my face is a little bit more puffy. I'm currently filming this video at nighttime, but it also just feels good and really relaxing. I don't know if you can see any difference whatsoever, but I like these things. They're cheap and I think that they feel nice and they make me feel a little bit less puffy and they're nice and cooling. But the other things that I've tried in videos that were really cheap, cheap actually, but I've continued using are both of these. This first one is like a little LED. I mean, I don't know if the LED does anything, but when you touch this on your face, it buzzes. And oh my God, this one feels good. I will use either or this. This one is just like a cooling sensation. This one doesn't have that, but then this one also vibrates, which maybe feels like it's doing something a bit more, but you can turn it up to different levels. They have a red light, a blue light. When you touch it, it buzzes. I promise you, it's not just a glorified vibrator. Like it actually feels like it's doing something. <laughs> and it kind of fits the contours of your face. These are both rechargeable, by the way. I don't really bother with my forehead because my forehead is just kind of like, I don't know, flat and not puffy. Whereas the rest of my face can get a little bit puffy. I don't know if anyone can see a difference or if that's noticeable at all. Anyway, that is that little device, which I quite enjoy using. Like I said, it's not a permanent fix. It's not gonna get rid of your double chin like every single ad that I see on TikTok says, but it does help me personally, who sometimes gets a bit of a puffy face in the mornings. and it it makes me feel like it's, I don't know, it feels like it's doing something. And then the other device I use with some aloe vera gel, which seems kind of random, but some sort of like conducting gel you need for this one because it's a microcurrent device. And if you drag this along your bare skin, it may potentially like give you a little electric shock. You're joking, it's out of battery, no. Oh, there we go, no it's not, I made that up. You can turn it up to different levels, but what this does is it kind of feels like it's giving you, like it's an electric current, which Oh my God, when I was in New York with Sephora, we went to Face Gym and they used their device, like the Face Gym device. That one actually made such a difference. This is just a cheap one from Amazon, which I don't think is quite as effective. And also when I was looking at tutorials for these microcurrent devices, it says to like slowly move it up your face. But when I was having the facial at Face Gym in New York, she was literally using it like this, like super quickly all over my skin. So now I'm like, which is the correct method? I don't know. But to be honest, I mostly just like this, because it feels like a really nice massage. Again, the little balls are quite cooling and it fits like along my jawline so nicely and into like my cheekbone that it feels like it's doing something. But yeah, I don't know. Can you see my eyelid twitching? It's really weird sensation. The face gym one literally was making my lip go like, 
if anyone else has one of these micro current devices or has used like a stronger one or has like been to get it done in a clinic or something, it's crazy the way that it makes your face twitch. Part of me was lying there like, is this safe to be doing that? I don't know, it seems to be quite a common thing. Oh, that just felt like it gave me a little electric shock. I don't know if anyone will be able to tell a difference in my face. I don't know if there is a drastic difference in my face. I feel like it does a little bit of something. It's not a bloody miracle worker, but it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. It could be a placebo. Even if it's a placebo, it makes me feel a little bit more confident. So you do not need these things in your life. They are not a necessity, but they're kind of fun. There you go. I think I've got both of those on Amazon actually, so I'll link them down below if I can still find them. I'm just going to moisturize. This is that road glazing fluid. Oh my God, my face feels so soft after the whole shaving thing. Oh my God, it feels amazing. Watch me wake up tomorrow morning with stubble. Well, I will report back. Um, I just wanna make sure that my face is moisturized before I use my tan, otherwise it will potentially stick to any dry areas. Products with vitamin C, I found are making a difference to like the brightness of my skin and helping to further reduce scars and stuff. In terms of my skincare routine, I am using Tretinoin, which is um, prescription via Dermatica. Sorry, I've got a dog hair like stuck to my lip. I do work with Dermatica on a paid basis, but I do use their um, Tretinoin like every, well, not actually, I don't use every day because I kind of do the every other day method. But I find it works really well for my skin. Their vitamin C is also incredible. I've also used the Garnier vitamin C, which I like, but it's not quite as potent. So it doesn't make as big of a difference, but it definitely did make it some difference. And then currently at the moment, I'm using the Summer Fridays vitamin C that I got in an advent calendar at Christmas, but that one is quite pricey. The next thing I do to make me feel more confident, and also I find that this helps with making any acne scars or like active breakouts look less bold if that makes sense, is self tanning my face. And I know that not everybody likes fake tan, that is absolutely fine. And a lot of people don't like that I use fake tan, which I understand because I used to make videos all the time about like pale foundations. And I don't self tan all the time now, I used to. I went through a phase where I was fake tanning like every single week, I just cannot be bothered anymore. And honestly, most of the time, I will just tan my hands, my neck and my face. There's just something about it. It just gives me a bit more of a glow. And it also, I think helps to blend in any scars because there's not quite as much of a contrast between my pale skin and the redness. It's like a slightly darker skin tone in the redness. Does that make sense? The two that I really like are the Garnier Natural Bronzer Self Tan Drops. These are really nice. I've also used the Bondi Sands Facial Tan Drops in the past. Those are nice. Um, my favorite of all time is the Jamie Genevieve X U Tan CBD Tanning Water. As you can see, I've got the tiniest little bit of this. I think I've been through like, I don't know, three or four bottles of this stuff. As a blonde, I would not recommend spraying this all over your face like they do in the adverts because then I find that it gets in my hairline, turns my hairline slightly orange, gets in my eyebrows, turns my eyebrows orange, and it's just a little bit more unpredictable. The spraying it on your face definitely does work in terms of giving you like a even coverage, but I would always then like buff it in with a brush afterwards. But after a while, I just found it easier to spray this onto a brush and then put it all over my face. I am though. Oh my God, it's still gonna get in my hair, isn't it? One sec. So. I am actually gonna just spray it on my neck. What the hell have I just done with my brush? Oh, it's here. And then I'm just gonna blend it in. Okay, so that's my neck done. And as you can see, it kind of goes on clear, but then it does develop over a few hours, obviously. Oh no, I'm running out. I might actually have to use the bit of the Garnier one, but I just kind of paint this all over my face. You wanna make sure that you don't miss, like sometimes I go like too far around my mouth and have ended up in the past with like a big ring around my mouth, but I'd like to do my face and my neck at the same time, just so I can kind of like blend it all in together. So I just do like a few sprays is carefully go around my eyebrows. I also think as well, something about fake tan makes my under eye bags less obvious. And again, I think it's to do with the, like the contrast of my skin tone compared to like the darkness of my under eyes. And what I will then do, which I find is a really important step on my upper lip, in my smile lines where product tends to gather and just around the edges of my nose where again, I feel like product can sometimes gather there. I would just dab over it with either like a towel, like a dark colored towel or a towel that I'm gonna put in the wash or like a cotton pad. And same with my hairline. I just go round and kind of buff it out, I guess, so that I don't end up with it clinging too much in those areas. And just like remove a little bit. I just find that that works a little bit better. Sometimes I go over my eyebrows as well. I also just got that all over my hand, so I'm gonna go wash my hand quickly, otherwise I will end up with a tan palm. Actually, when it comes to my hands and my body, I love this stuff, the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Natural Bronze Body Lotion. I found that the types of tan that I can use have changed slightly when I've developed body eczema. I now get eczema like, sometimes on the, oh, you can't even see, it's doing really good at the moment, but like the inner parts of my arms, sometimes behind my knees. But I found the two types of tans that work really well for me are the clear tans that go on clear and then develop over time, like tanologist tan is still fine. Um, I love, oh my God, the U-tan exfoliating tanning milk is what it's called. It is such an odd 
concept for a tan, but for some, for whatever reason, I love that tan so much. It works so well, but any like gradual tanning moisturizers like this one, I really like the Bondi Sands gradual tanning moisturizer and um, the Bondi Sands pure range gradual tanning moisturizer. They work really well and they don't stick to my eczema patches. Whereas if I go for a tan that has got the guide color, unfortunately, I find that they stick and like grip onto eczema patches a lot more. But these kind of ones, I don't find irritate me. And also this one smells really nice as well because it's like the cocoa butter one. I like to use this on my hands so that they don't get super duper dark because sometimes they get super duper dark if you put regular tan on them and don't moisturize enough. The final thing that I'm gonna do is a bit of tan touring and a bit of tan freckles. This is the U-Tan Freckle Pen and it gives you semi-permanent freckles, which I personally love freckles. Oh my God, I've just put out way too much of it. Shit, 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 shit. I actually like to use this not only for freckles, but also to contour my nose. And I bring this on holiday with me because it's like a slightly darker color. You can sort of use it to um, sculpt your face. I'm just gonna blend it in with a brush. Actually, now there seem to be a lot more products on the market similar to this that are specifically for tan touring. It looks a little bit wild when you put it on, but obviously when you wash your face off afterwards, not wash your face off, when you wash it off, a lot of it will fade. I'm then also going to use it for some freckles. Another thing you can use um, for little fake freckles is the Maybelline Peel Off Brow Tin. That also works really well for little semi-permanent fake freckles. Looks crazy right now, but when you wash it off, it is a lot more subtle, I promise. And the final thing I'm actually gonna try, I have never tried this before, so it could go horrifically wrong, but I'm gonna try doing some tan touring. I know that I've just tanned my face. However, I'm gonna try with a regular tan like all the TikTok girlies are doing. Oh my God, have I just got this on my hand again? Definitely have, oh well. I'm gonna try, this is just the Bondi Sands tanning mousse. And I've seen Bambi Does Beauty do this all the time where she just takes some tan. I've seen a lot of people do this actually. And does like a bit of contouring. Do I use my sponge? Maybe. I'm just gonna dab some of that on. I don't know how much of a difference this will make because obviously I do have the other tan on already, but do I try a bit up here? Is that a bit too risky? God, I'm scared this is gonna look awful in the morning because I didn't want to get it in my hairline, but maybe I'm being a bit too scared and a bit too light handy with this. Uh, okay. Is that all I do? I think that's all I do. <laughs> oh my God, my ears are so red from that headband, but I do look a bit crazy right now with this whole situation on my face. However, I will see you guys in the morning and I will, I guess, like wash my face and see how it's all looking. And I would also just like to say, I don't do all these things at once. Like, I don't know, every few weeks, I'll maybe tint my eyebrows and my lashes while I'm brushing my teeth. Another day, if I just notice that my peach fuzz on my upper lip has grown back a little bit more, I will literally just quickly, like super quickly do a little ch -ch -ch -ch. And then again, on another, a random evening I might decide to tan my face and again it will take me two minutes but I guess I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning everyone it is the next day and this is how everything is looking. I've got to say I don't think the tan tour really did much for me. Maybe because I'd put tan all over my face anyway it all kind of blended in together. Maybe I didn't put enough on or maybe I just washed my face a bit too aggressively this morning and most of it kind of came off but the tan on my face and my neck and my hands is definitely still there. I can see a tiny little bit of that nose contour and a few little fake freckles, but again, probably could have gone a little bit more heavy handed with that. And I feel like I still managed to get some tan in my eyebrows because they are looking a little bit orange to me. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm editing this back and my eyebrows are literally red. How did I not notice that when I was filming? Like me saying they look a little bit orange. They literally look red. They are bright orange. I have no idea what happened because a couple days later when I filmed the footage after this, they looked normal. I don't know what happened that night or in the morning. I swear they don't normally come out looking that orange and I'm not too sure what's gone wrong there. But um, I couldn't tell you. It's a few days later after I filmed this video, but I wanted to update about the facial hair situation because the past couple days, my makeup, I swear, has never looked so smooth. The only things that I have noticed that are slight negatives is that, oh, I have a bunch of like glitter fallout on my face. Also, sorry, my makeup has been on all day. For the day afterwards, I came up with like a couple of tiny little sort of spots or I guess like irritation on my forehead but then that completely disappeared by the next day I was slightly worried that I was going to break out completely but it didn't develop into anything more however I have been breaking out a little bit along my jawline which I mean I do anyway kind of around the time of the month but it's not actually the time of the month right now so I don't know whether to like put this and this and like this down to that but other than that my makeup has been looking so smooth and glowy and like I've really actually noticed a difference on my cheeks I guess because there's no like fine hairs here 
any more for stuff to grip onto it just like goes on a lot smoother and you can actually kind of see if i zoom in like you can see where i've stopped around where my sideburns are but then you can kind of see like the tiny little hairs growing back but that's only with this big bright light on if i just turn that off you can't even see like at all and in terms of like stubbliness it feels a little bit stubbly but not as bad as i remember and i actually got james to feel my face and i was like does this feel like stubbly he was like a little bit but not really he was like it's not too bad so for that reason i would do this again i wouldn't bother doing it all the time because generally like my facial hair doesn't bother me that much definitely for special occasions you can find me shaving my face so just wanted to give a little update like i said though you don't have to do any of these things but i just wanted to show you what i do to make myself feel a bit more confident i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up that would massively help me out if you watch my videos frequently i would love to have you as a subscriber press that subscribe button and you will see my videos pop up when i upload and i hope you're all doing really good i will see you in my next video bye